Well, looks like we got a crisis coming up, maybe with a government shutdown. Now, it may be that Obama might unilaterally just say, raise the debt ceiling. Oh, he's not allowed to do that. You know, the presidency is actually getting usurping more and more power from the other two uh, branches of the government, which is the judicial and the legislative. More and more, in a very slow fashion, actually you've seen this happen a lot during F. Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the 1930s. The guy was almost like a semi-dictator because of the emergency that happened during the Great Depression. With all these uh, work programs and stuff like that funded by the government. But that's what happens, you know. That's what happens. So, you know, you got to go old school all the way. And actually, a lot of my videos are about old school technology all the way. Sometimes the wisdom has been there from decades past. And the marketers and high dollar bullshit artists came in and sell you products that rip you off. Piecemeal, right? Um, silver's not a ripoff. You're still uh, you're still on a smart strategy. Um, you know, even though it's kind of in the doldrums right now, you know what I think Jim Rogers said that there's probably going to be a long correction period. Probably right. And you know, looking back at when all the commodities they almost go like that. You know, nothing happens, nothing happens. Then all of a sudden, something happens. You know, I can give you one extreme example with um, you know the um, rare earth metals in the stocks especially. Um, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened in 2010. Then in September 2010, a lot of the stocks went up five to ten times in a month. Like that. And that's, you know, that's what's going to happen with the silver and gold stocks and things like that. It's going to catch you by surprise. Nobody's going to know exactly when. And like I said, if you know exactly when anything is, you're going to be a gazillionaire. Now, things aren't as bad as, you know, the you know, I'm tired of, I'm going to name some of them, like, uh, I don't know, there's that, I forgot the hell of guys, there's Fabian out there, and there's a couple other ones, one's like got, a, got almost like a shaved head, well, it's like crew cut, and he's always talking about doom and gloom, and, and you see this crap all over the place, you know, I, you know, I, I'm tired of Alex Jones, I'm tired of that garbage, uh, Jeff Rents, I like the way he talks, but you know, He's not a doom and gloomer, and a, you know he's a better guy. I like the way he presents things. He's more calm, but the guy makes I think a good four hundred thousand dollars a year, and he's got PayPal on his site. <laughs> I mean, come on, man! I don't put no PayPal out here. This is bullshit. You know, I'm just giving you straight up common sense, uh, sense advice. And actually, what's actually motivating me more to do this is, you know, I'm getting pissed off at these jerks because they're. They're scaring the crap out of people, and they're making a dollar. You know, the con the real thing is to stay cool and stay common sense. You know, I'll point out a couple of facts about the United States. You know, you know, the, you know that China exports a lot, right? But you know what's right behind China and exports? Two countries: the United States and Germany. We're heads we're heads above, way above the rest of the world in exports. USA and Germany. USA. We're not as strong as China. China's number one in exports, but we're way up there. But China's not energy independent. Who's energy independent produces a lot of its energy? The USA. You know what's going to happen? Australia. Australia's big time energy. Canada, right? Russia too, right? Actually, the United States was probably going to surpass everybody in energy production by 2017 in a few years. Okay? You know, it's not all doom and gloom, man. I mean, God damn, I mean, there's problems, but holy crap. And, you know, I'm going to point out something else. You get, people are going to get mad at me for this damn thing. And I, actually, I think Gaddafi was like the most fair and square leader going. His big mistake was he tried to establish the golden dinar. But you know what's going on in Libya today? Yeah, I know there's like problems, right? But you know what? Their country has the highest GDP in real GDP gross domestic product, growth rate, out of any country in the world. It's over 20%. Over 20%. They're having the explosive growth. After that stuff happened with Gaddafi and all the problems, major investments in there. You could say, yeah, it's the bad guys, but the bad guys are providing the money and the jobs. You know? So, I mean, the bad guys aren't as bad as you think, man. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. You know, people like always hear that cliche word, they hear the CIA or something, uh, 
you know, it ain't all bad. I mean, there's bad elements and everything, you know. It ain't all bad, okay? Even the Western bad guys, quote-unquote, aren't all bad. People don't want to hear that shit. What gets me annoyed sometimes, I'm kind of digressing here, but, you know, you get, well, two things. People run from the West, and they run over to Vladimir Putin like he's a good guy. And I'm like, that ain't a choice, damn it. I could see criticism about the West, but don't go to that guy. And number two is, you get a lot of these religious extremists. Either they're talking about $10, $8 silver, or they're talking $500 or $1,000 silver. You know, if we got, you know, $500 or $1,000 silver could happen if, we got in a global conflict, and it was, like, really bad, and, like, Washington, D.C. got blown up in New York City, maybe. I don't know. Maybe there's going to be $1,000 silver then. I don't know. You don't want that to happen, though, believe me. But, you know, like, that, that's a scenario that's possible. But what's coming up soon, in reality, getting back here to Earth, you know, not talking about catastrophic, catastrophic things, but something that's coming up as a problem is a government shutdown. That looks like it's looming. They're going to blame, you know grand old party on it, the Republicans, but it's a lot of stuff going on, you know? And I'm not really die. I'm definitely not diehard. I guess I lean more Republican, you know, in a true sense, you know, the more, um, I'm not that conservative conservative, though. I mean, I don't know where the hell I fit exactly, because I'm liberal in some ways, because I think a lot of these conservatives are pretty damn mean. I don't know where the hell I fit exactly politically. I don't think I fit any mold. Um, but the, uh, the Republicans are, you know, they can really get blamed for it, but actually it's a mathematical equation. And it's going to stop at one point. But when it, it gets threatened with shutdown, it's not going to shut down. But what's going to happen is there's probably going to be a lot more QE. And I guess George Soros' bet is going to come out good. Now, what commodity can go down with the markets? Oil. Oil. But it may not because there's all this stuff going on in Syria. Right? I mean, normally, if you see the markets tank, it may not be gold going down, but oil can go down. Because that means, you know, there's going to be less production, less faith in the future, and all this kind of garbage. But usually when you're scared about the markets because of government shutdown and the ability of the United States to, uh, you know, uh, service its debt and everything like that, make its payments, meet its obligations, people run into gold. I mean... You might see the market tank and gold go up, okay? Silver is a crazy animal. It could go, you know, if, well, if I see gold and oil going up, if there's a problem with the American dollar being uh, devalued, and actually the index is like a little bit above 80, maybe it'll be in the 70s pretty soon. That'll be a little milestone. Um, but if you see the dollar tanking somewhat, um, and you see oil going up because of Syria tensions, you know, the tensions get back on again, something goes on, you know, where there's like uh, troops on the ground or something, say something like that happens. Well, what's going to happen? You know, oil go up. If you see oil going up because the tensions in the Middle East and there's problems in uh, the U.S. government because, and they're still also talking about, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, them not beating, meeting their debt obligations, then you're going to see more people running into gold. So if you see oil and gold going up, you, you're probably going to see silver take start really taking off then, for sure. And that, it, that looks pretty ripe. You know, I've been saying, I think 2014, we're going to see this explosion in silver. It's going to hit that, it's going to go through 50. This is my, this has been, I'm saying it again and again. It's going to go through to 47 to 50. And people are going to say it's going to easily go to 100. I bet you it don't go to 100. I bet you it gets hammered at the 72 to 75 Fibonacci point. It's my guess. And it goes down below 50 into the 40s again. And then in 2017, and as somebody pointed out, they say October 27 looks like the end. October 2017 looks like the end point. I've been saying it looks like every three years we see this peak. So 24, you know. 2005, 2008, 2011, look at the metals, right? 2014, 2017, okay? It's not that irrational. It's a guess. Yeah, it is a guess, but I think it's a decent guess, okay? It's based on pure common sense, basically, 
and kind of like the markets do work in waves. You know, they do. And he's fib the Fibonacci is one thing I can really trust a lot of times, too. You will know exactly where the pullback is. But usually when you have this major pullback or major resistance point, it's on those fib points. That, that damn stuff works. 18 is a good fib point, too. Okay? So, you know, we're, we're pulled back to already. That's a lot of resistance. So, you know, don't count on it. If you don't have any silver, don't count on it going to 8 or 10. I think you're foolish. Okay? You know, and then on the way up... You know, you'd be stupid if, if you know, if it, if it goes through 50 on the way up, say, in 2014, um, it's going to go quite a bit past 50. You'd be stupid. I'm going to, this is my advice. I'm going to personally do this. I'm going to sell a little bit at 60, 60 some, and, just, and as it goes up. If it happens to go to 100, I'll be, be selling in small steps because I think there's going to be another major correction after 2014. And in, in 2017, it's going to be the final top. Also, that four blood moons predictions I showed where they have the uh, seven years with the uh, Hebrew calendar. They had the seven years with the Hebrew calendar. Was One was with uh, September 2011. The other one was September, right? Uh, September, um, excuse me, September 20, 2001 was one on the Hebrew calendar. The next seven years was September of uh, 2008 where they had a very tight financial crisis. They had a problem with the money market. They had infused a lot of money into the markets. And also, the next one would be um, September 2015, right around within the days of the fourth blood moon. I don't know if that's exactly going to be it, but I figure silver might go way up in 2014. I'll have a major correction after that, maybe in somewhere in 2015. And then it'll go all the way up in 2017 and 2018 was where it hit its final height. That's what I'm thinking. All right, I don't know this for a fact, but that's what I'm thinking. So, uh, also, you know, I want to actually point out with this politics garbage. Um, you know, don't get behind any one party. I voted third party a lot of times, and uh, you know, I realize there's problems with the Republicans and Democrats. I generally lean Republican, but. You know, I see a guy like Trafficin, you know, the guy from Illinois. That guy's a good stand-up Democrat all the way, man. I'd vote for that guy any day, for president or whatever, you know. He'll never make it, though, because he got in jail for, for some crap because, you know, he did some, I don't know what the hell he did. But he was, he's all right, man. He's honest, man. And also, I want to point out, you know, everything the West does is not evil, like Alex Jones likes to point out. And, you know, I like, like these guys with their PayPal buttons on their four hundred thousand dollar a year earning sites and stuff like that um they point out the west is evil blah 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 and they're earning all kinds of money which stuff and you know they got paypal like you're supposed to donate to them besides support their advertising which is ridiculous and uh, you know they don't believe in a capitalist system huh sure but you know Gaddafi, i think was the best guy of all the guys out there in the middle east it was kind of a shame the guy was so stupid as to try to go buck the establishment because, you know, it's kind of stupid to do that. But, you know, look at the outcome. You know, there was a lot of bad stuff that happened. But overall, they're investing a whole slew of money in it. And Libya is going to wind up being better than it ever was it ever, even if Gaddafi continued. You know? So, I don't know. Just really bad stuff and really good stuff. Just It's like, you know, the Western elite aren't as super terrible as people are making it sound, and going to Vladimir Putin is definitely not an option. I'll say that over and over again till people get it. And, you know, the guys over in Iran that run that show, I mean, they're light years away from Gaddafi and fairness. I don't give a shit what happens to those that regime, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I don't care, man. You know, I hope they uh, whack them good someday, and it looks like that's going to come about. That looks like it's Western elite policy. But, you know, I ain't got nothing against the Iranian people. It's going to actually, you know, if that happens, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of tumultuous activity, things that are going to happen in the money markets and, uh, I mean, in the currency markets. You might see gold go way to hell up, things like that. But it'll all work out. It'll all work out, you know. Uh, we don't need dictators anywhere. We don't need them, um, you know, whether they're in Iran selling us selling oil to every place, trying to export terrorism, and they do export terrorism, okay? I mean, people like think that's all CIA propaganda. It's not. They do export terrorism, you know? If you're an infidel, you're dead meat, okay? 
I mean, I don't know what the hell to tell people. I mean, it's alternative shit. It's like, I agree with it, but you know, some people take it so excessively, like everything in the West is bad. It ain't. It ain't. It's actually overall, overall, I'll use that cliche, overall or adjective, it's better than any place else in the freaking world, even though it's getting more communistic as we speak, you know? But let's let's keep things in uh, perspective as to, uh, you know, what's going on, you know? But uh, just expect that Warren, um, not Warren Buffett, but George Soros' bet on the markets is going to play out. You're going to see the markets are already starting to downturn just out about talk about shutdown. And I think they're going to tank, man. They're going to tank. But I'm not 110% oil should tank, but not gold. But oil may not tank because it's not the only factor that's going on. It may actually be the Syria factor that can rise it up cause it to go way the hell up and markets could tank you know who the hell knows for sure because the Middle East has always been that wild card but uh, do hang on with your gold and silver don't wait for a freak oh, I don't know I don't know this for like Karnak the magician but I personally would not wait for no ten dollar silver <laughs> I mean uh, you know it's almost like the people on the way up, they're waiting for freaking $200 silver or $300 silver right away. So, uh, you know, there's extremists everywhere. And, you know, I tell you the truth, I usually find it's your religious people. I don't care what kind of religion they belong to, these are religious people are big extremists going, man. That's why I ain't too religious, you know? I'm more philosophical. So, you know, betterment of mankind, that type of stuff. So anyway, just hang on to your investment. Watch out for October. Um... We got another lunar lunar uh, indication of what's going to happen in October, October 18th to 20th. We also, uh, it may not be in a silver market, I don't know, but it may affect the silver market too. You know, no market is like, you know, lives in a vacuum. You know what I'm saying? No market lives in a vacuum. Everything is linked. It may be something else that's affected more, but it probably will affect the silver market too. My gut reaction is that you're going to see gold go up, and it's going to help silver. That's my gut reaction. A little more than gut reaction, because a government shutdown is not good for the full faith and credit of the U.S. government and the U.S. dollar. So where is the money going to go? Into gold, right? Common sense, right? Common sense.